Hell yeah, guys. Let's sink in. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I don't know about you, Wes, but uh, you know, you've been talking about the daily naps. I'm starting starting to get a little bit worried about diabetes creeping in with all the with all the midday naps. You a little lethargic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got to make a move here. Well, marathon starts soon. It's time to either make a <laughs> make a life change or just accept diabetes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's happening? You're getting tired. A lot yeah, of diabetes scare going around in the media these days. Yeah, Wes, I know it's true. Wes and I are taking a lot of uh, unintentional midday naps, or like lethargic in the middle of the day. Mm. Yeah, you guys are taking naps. Too many naps. <laughs> <laughs> I took like a twenty minute there today. <laughs> yeah, twenty minutes not bad. When it gets up to like an hour, they say that's when diabetes is creeping well, in. Oh yeah, before yeah. I was on like a two hour. Yeah. 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 Just like <laughs> fighting it. Oh, shit. Instead of that nap, we gotta do, do some cardio or something. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, lay down away from the sugars. Brother. Yeah. <laughs> nap. Huh? Yeah, we got to start the. Fat, I mean, the fatathon begins soon. So yeah, be a real shame if we just just got diabetes. <laughs> you know? It would suck. I don't think I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Not pricking your finger every day. It doesn't sound that fun. No. I think they're no. working on a workaround there. Yeah, yeah that, there's yeah, supposed to be like time. a breath one, I think. Yeah, it's like pretty that. much it's pretty much worth getting it nowadays. Yeah. It's an <laughs> asshole. Make it so easy. <laughs> it's so easy. It made Either it way, so easy to fuck have working diabetes. out. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too fucking easy. sweet, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it made that shit easy. Um, <laughs> Go! Welcome to episode 762 of Hard Factor. It is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. Thank you for cheating on the news with us. I'm Will. We got Mark, Pat, Wes, all the fellas in the house today for this Wednesday episode. We're talking some Th pranks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're yeah. talking some pranks, uh, a little surprise looming in the cup of coffee. What else? Oh. What else, guys? What else you Thank you, Will. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank um, you. Story Mark's going to hate later. I can tell you that. Yeah, oh, okay. I kind of know a little bit about it. I might look away. Uh, Virginia School Board has seen better days. Got a story about them. Yeah, and we're talking about the most, per well, the dick pic congressman. You know what I'm talking about. Anthony Weiner. Mm -mm. You have to stay insert, tuned to find out. Ooh. Insert any congressman. Yeah, but this one does okay. it a lot. <laughs> right. Big fan. Nice. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, real quick. Somebody in the Hard Ohio family, Connor Snoga, um, is uh, from San Antonio, and he's uh, loading up supplies and taking them into southeast Louisiana right now uh, to help with Hurricane Ida relief. Um He's uh, he also runs a, a community pantry set up at St. Anthony's of Padua Church in Luling, Louisiana. Um, if you want to help out, uh, he's a guy. It, he's his his Venmo is at Connor two N's C O N N O R dash Snoga S N O G A, um, and he's taking like uh, gasoline, uh, water, anything else that people need over um, who have been affected by Hurricane Ida from Texas to Louisiana. He's doing that this weekend. He's holding Very a big noble. fish. We're positive. We're positive. Connor's on the up and up. <sighs> right, Mark. So I was just trying to get ahead of that. Uh, he's okay. holding a giant fish in every profile pic I could find of him, which okay. lets you know it's legit Cajun or a really good catfisher. So Ooh, yeah. yeah, wait, so, catfisher like fisher of catfish or right. exactly. But but I, I think I th look, this guy, he runs a community pantry set up at, at, at uh, St. Anthony's of Padua's Church in Luling, Louisiana. Again, if you want to help out, you can hit him with a Venmo. I believe uh, he's on the up and up, and he's doing a great, noble thing. So yes. what's, I mean, if you got 10 extra dollars, who cares if it's, you know, whatever. If he it's, takes five of them. If he takes yeah. it. <laughs> it's yeah. helping out Louisianans. It's in water and gas. They need it. Yeah. It's better than whatever you were going to do, which is nothing. Exactly. Which yeah, is like so. eat, eat something crappy or buy cigarettes or some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, and uh, I remember uh, the listener that sent that tip in. So, if it is a scam, I will find you. That's right. <laughs> so, there you have it. Say, say this about my one more time. Just, <laughs> uh, at Connor Snoga, two N's and Connor dash S N O G A is uh, how, how, you, uh, how you can contribute to the cause. Uh, also, housekeeping item green room it is what the fuck wednesday live at 5 p.m eastern today we're going to talk craziest poop stories on the green room app by spotify download it follow all the hosts get in there crazy stories i was i was riding home after dropping the kiddo off at school and stern was uh sharing poop stories this morning it was a sign that is already already was telling just an all-timer i don't know if anyone's going to beat arties but we're going to try can you tell Artie's on today's show? <laughs> yeah, on yeah, absolutely. I remember just it. Pretend like it's yours. If it yeah, gets absolutely. stale, <laughs> just, <laughs> just recount Artie Lang's <laughs> poop story. <laughs> Pat, are you excited for the poop stories? No. no. Okay. Pat gets real squeamish around poop. Yeah, but you got the you got some you have you have a, a formidable um, that, scent. Uh, and, yeah. 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 What? Yeah. Move on. Move on. You've got a robust, yeah. the most musk, formidable, you know, I'd say. A robust odor. <laughs> it's, if you were like a superhero, you, it would be one of your weapons. Right. It would be powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Against roommates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> roommates hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show your roommates this roommate. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. Do you have a good shit story though? No, Pat? I don't want. <laughs> it's all right. You don't have to tell one. You yeah, just have well, to, you just have to make those noises. Just listen, and uh, we'll judge. We'll just one this. time, I was taking a dump. <laughs> it's they all start out that way. It's right. Yeah. Part. Yeah. And then <laughs> something didn't work out the way I thought it was gonna. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. Uh, hilarity ensued. Oh yeah. Always. That's that's it. Everybody That's, poops. How'd yeah. you know my story? Yeah, and there was a <laughs> member of the opposite sex involved. You know where you get a lot of, uh, I walked into a, I was at a party, and I went to go take a dump, and then I opened the no door, and door. there was a hot chick there. Oh, yeah. yep. Or a bar, no door. I've done That's that one. A lot of those. You, I know you've told that story on a green room before. I know. Really? Yeah. I knew that's what you were referencing. Well, it also happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't me. It was someone See, else. See, more evidence that everybody has a good bathroom story. So join the green room, What the Fuck Wednesday, today, live at 5 p.m. Eastern. My wife, my wife caught me walking around the house like recently in the past couple months, and I was walking around naked, and all of a sudden she starts laughing, and it's because I had like a little oh. piece of toilet paper sticking out of the top oh, of my cheeks. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah, it stuck to your body. Oh, yeah. no. So she had a good laugh because she was well, like, "You're, you're, you have some toilet paper in your butt." We're supposed to start the diet competition yeah. again soon, Mark. Don't worry. That stuff yeah. like that'll stop happening if we just take a couple steps in the right direction. Sure. <laughs> sure, <Okay>. will. <laughs> that butt's gonna go right away. Yep, I'm pretty sure. You'll be pooping less. Can't so even wipe. It'll be so no no butt. So you'll be pooping <laughs> less, you know. Let's poop. Let's see. Mm. All right. Let's do the news. <laughs> Cup of coffee in the big time is up first. Yeah. Cup of coffee in the big time. Holidays. History. Trending news. And it is September 1st, the start of a new month. Uh, I didn't look up anything about September. You guys know anything about, like, September? Anything? It's a good month. Got any you got to remember one me? of the days in there. Just Labor Day. Labor yeah. Day. The 20, was it was the 21st of September? What's the name of the song? When no, you remember? The oh, something of September twenty first, right? You remember fourteenth? I don't, I don't recall. Earth, Wind, and Fire is that yeah, what Earth, it is? Fire. Okay, uh, it's September my birthday 1st. month too. Virgos, go Virgos! Oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, happy early birthday, Mark. A lot of a lot of our friends are born. So you know why Pat and me and a lot of people are born around this time of of the year? Because hmm. our parents like to fuck in the winter. Hell yeah, they do. Yeah, cozy like up. New Year's yeah. babies, basically. It's best cure for cold balls, right? Warm yeah. pussy. What? <laughs> you never heard that? No. Nope. Best Who best cure best cure for cold balls. Somebody said that. Who for said warm, that? To you? Warm pussy. Some guy in Kentucky. <laughs> Some guy in Kentucky. <laughs> He's doing it wrong. <laughs> How's it? What? He, what just nestles, he, he just nestles them on up in there. Yeah, he just, just, he just gets like close. a hand warmer. Ugh. Slap it against it. 
as MGD. <laughs> 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 Told that to a girl one time. She didn't like it. No, <laughs> no, shit. no. I would have thought that would have gone over. Yeah. It's like trying to stick a piece of spaghetti up a pipe. What he's doing? Yeah, I don't <laughs> think he goes all the way in. I think he just wants to be near it, like yeah, a bum, just... like a bum by a fire. Yeah, it's like putting your hands on a. Heat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get real close to it. Yeah, <laughs> feel balls. the heat coming off that. That's right. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah. What? How, when he mm. said that to you, <laughs> I said you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and I know from experience. Totally, man. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're absolutely right, sir. <laughs> yeah. How much older was he than you? <laughs> I don't know. I think he was like a senior, and I was a freshman. Oh, Impart a little wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> holidays for September 1st are uh, Building and Code Staff Appreciation Day. Um, congrats to everybody who's in Building and Code. Um, uh, Chicken Boy Day. Emma mm. M. Nut Day. Ginger Cat Appreciation Day. Global Talent Acquisition Day. National Cherry Popover Day. National No Rhyme Nor Reason Day. National Tofu Day in only in the UK, uh, Pink Cadillac Thank Day, God. Save Japan's Dolphins Day, Toy Tips Executive Toy Test Day, and World Letter Writing Day. Just a you know, notice it wasn't Save Japan's Whales because that's a lost cause. You're not oh, so well, awesome. they don't need saving. They don't need saving, Mark. They they can look after themselves. Yeah. They slaughter the shit out of those dolphins over there. I can't oh, wait really? till the whales start oh, yeah. messing with the Japanese whaling ships and start just just capsizing them. They're going to figure it out soon. I'm rooting for it. You guys ever watch that show Whale Wars? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone's seen it, right? Yeah. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, the entire show it's stupid. Is, is a clickbait. Right, it's, because you right. never see anything. There's no it's just war. Like, right. Yep. No, it's a bunch of like nerds out on a ship trying to prevent whaling, and like they never, there's no action. They shoot like confetti at the, the equivalent of confetti at the. <laughs> yeah, at they're the, like, at the we fired ship. a flare. Yeah. It, like, it like, it's supposed to like spoil the meat or something. Stop Whale hunters yeah. wouldn't go. It wouldn't go well. Wait, Watch this. These Japanese uh, whalers hate confetti. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it like it like spoils the meat. They they shoot stuff over uh, that spoils the whale, whale meat, so it, like, it renders it useless. It, kills it also the whale. kills the whale. Yeah, it gets no, the blowhole. No, the whales are dead when they when the when the oh, when the so whale people that are the that are trying to save the whales that makes it their their efforts futile. Oh, that's stupid. But like, it's like a, you know, like if you ever heard of a freegan, like a, a vegan that if if it's there and it's dead already, they'll eat it because it's it would go to waste otherwise. Well, right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that whale's life is then he's not imparting any of that blubber. On I agree any with you. Of society. Fucking wasteful, man. Yeah. That is incredibly wasteful. Yeah. Why do the Japanese love eating whales so much? Uh, you know, like tried men. whale. Have you? West, like, yeah. That's yeah. the place. A you lot of go. it is just this. Just you yeah. hate whales so much, you could just get no. He's whales. saying penises like yeah, this. Penis. Well, you'd have penis erections. Like mm. Yeah, but you get erections. Everything you gives you an erection over there. Like this. It's the second <laughs> best thing for a cold pair of balls. That's yeah, right. as whale it's blubber. Nice mm -hmm. plate of whale meat. Yeah. Just What's the best cure? <laughs> whale blubber, and warm pussy. I don't know why they eat it. I know it's got, it's got to do something with penises. Yeah. Right. Oh, for sure. But also, yeah. blubber is probably delicious because fat on a steak. I mean, come on. I mean, and frying like something fat. in whale blubber, that's got to be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. I'm that's sure humans sure. great, too, you know? Probably. Yeah. Younger sure humans, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Not interested in that one. Uh, today mm -hmm. in history, September 1st, uh, not a bad one. It starts out real bad. 1939, it was the German invasion of Poland. Uh, well, that was that ended old, half the day later. The old Blitzkrieg tactics, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, swift action uh, made it a made it a walk in the park for the Nazis there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, but it gets better. Uh, 1951, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States signed the ANZUS Pact. ANZUS, A N Z U S Pact. Um, it's like basically like Creative. you know mutual protection pact between those oceanic countries we're Pacific australia nations. and we're new zealand and you're the u.s let's be ansys yes mm -hmm. ansys mate ansys what does that mean just the first letter of our countries it sounds Australian like a combination zealand, of yeah. the words yeah yeah <laughs> uh 1985 september 1st uh in a search led by american oceanographer robert ballard the wreck of the titanic was found on the ocean floor at a depth of about 13,000 feet or 4,000 meters. What a discovery. Meters. Now, that's a treasure hunter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See? 
Speaking of any, uh, you guys getting back on the trail? I hear that we're releasing that video. Glad right? you so, asked. Uh, yeah, I'd say um, this week, look for it. If not today, by Friday, we're going to release Wes and I, Hard Factor Treasure Hunters, on YouTube for the public, for the general public to watch and see what we've done. You basically almost found the Titanic in that video. Very close. The last find is it shocked a combined 150 years of treasure hunters. It blew their minds. Yeah. It was mind blowing stuff. Really, really, really uh, revolutionary. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube. I enjoyed it. Hard factor YouTube. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Okay. Uh, top three trending news stories. Number three, Mike Richards. Uh, he was fired all the way from Jeopardy for being a total clown uh, that tried to hire himself as the host when he was already the executive producer of the show. And the job was to replace the most iconic TV host of all time, Alex Trebek. Um, so he did that. There was also his controversial podcast statements that we've covered before. Um, Jeopardy released a statement on why they fired Mike Richards, but they did not have to. So long, Mike Richards. You trended three times this summer. So what the fuck is going on? Every time I turn goddamn around, there's a new guest. They're trying some new asshole. Just pick a fucking lane, man. This a lot of like it's already Oscars. been taped. A lot of it's already been taped. So okay. they're they like they're How? saying they have no. They can't go We're back. We're all now. gonna host it, right? The, Pat, the thing is, they're realizing it's just an impossible task to replace. Trebek. Well, you can't expect someone to just get in there and be Trebek day one. Like, you well, got to give them some fucking runway. You got to just lock in with a choice and just and make that person your quarterback and, and, and get them some cancel the show. They should, they should just no, stop should, the show. They should just do it with Bialik. I think that, like, she's fine, right? Like, isn't everybody like she's the host nah. that's left now? She's not. No, fine. no, no. OK, no. Pass. She's, she's obnoxious. That's what she is. All right, then you fucked it up real bad. Jeopardy uh, moving it on. Number two. The dog crates uh, left at the Kabul airport. A stack of dog crates with live dogs in them uh, were left at the uh, Kabul airport after the USA left. And now the uh, blame game is in full effect. Here is a picture of the dogs in the crates that set social media and the Internet just ablaze with, with uh. very angry people who are, you know, rightfully upset that the dogs got abandoned there at the Kabul airport it's a Cuomo situation. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, but here's the response. Maybe the Taliban will take care of them. Right. Well, funny you say that, Mark. Here's the response from uh, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby. He tweeted. He said to correct erroneous reports. The U.S. military did not leave any dogs in cages at Hamid Karzai International Airport, including the reported military working dogs. Photos circulating online were animals under the care of the Kabul Small Animal Rescue, not dogs under our care. So those were just dogs people were hoping that we would take with us instead of leaving on the boiling hot tarmac garage in Kabul. That's the good note from the uh, from the Pentagon press secretary. Gotta let the dogs go. Yeah, at least <clears throat> open the fucking cages. Nah, yeah, like, something other than like a baby goat picture. in college. Yeah. Um, Kirby, he actually added more about the actual American human beings that got left uh, in Afghanistan who still want to come home after the full troop withdrawal. Uh, President Joe Biden estimated the amount of Americans left in Afghanistan to be about one to two hundred or maybe 10 percent of the total Americans at the start of uh, the withdrawal in his weird, angry speech on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and then Kirby, uh, the, the press secretary for the Pentagon said this of those Americans uh, still stuck in Afghanistan who want to get out. Like how does diplomacy get those people out of the Taliban controlled Afghanistan? It's not completely unlike the way we do it elsewhere around the world. I mean, we have uh, Americans that get stranded in, in, uh, in countries all the time. <laughs> so just another day, yeah, day at the office. Em. So fuck them, right? Just, yeah. just another day at the office for old curbs. Yeah. You know, also, was that like code for pay a ransom? Was that like, what is he saying there? No, they're saying leverage. They're saying uh, just like we do it always. We build leverage. We find a leverage point and then we leverage them out of there. So we like got the, some of theirs. They got some of us. You know, it's well, politics. Well, there was there was a deal. showbiz, baby. <laughs> there was some sort of secret deal <laughs> done between so the Taliban <laughs> and the U.S. government to escort people out. I mean, the Taliban really wanted all of our people out so they could not be on their best behavior or whatever the fuck that is. Right. Like, 
Right. Well, there's reports. I don't know how accurate of like them just like going door to door and just executing the Afghanistan people that helped us. Now. Well, yeah, sure we, that, we played yeah. the video yesterday of the yeah. fucking public, the Kandahar thing set the tone. I mean, you know what's happening now. Also, if They're what Joe Biden it's, it's said, what, hot boy summer for them, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. According if what Joe Biden said in his speech, like that they had been warning them since March to get the fuck out. I mean, sorry, but like if you've been getting warned for that long to get the fuck out of Afghanistan. Yeah, but at the same at time, point, Wes, uh, but Wes, at the same time, he gave a speech like 20 days ago saying that the, the new Afghan government would not fall. And like there was like basically listen, I get no it, chance of it happening. If, so. if, if I'm in Afghanistan, and they're like, listen, get out of Afghanistan. You might not. You might be fucked in a couple months. I'm getting out of Afghanistan. Yeah, but if you're with ways. your family and the president saying if you're with your family and the president saying that there's no there's no danger. That that goes both ways, Wes. Yeah. Yes, it is foolhardy to to not get out as early as you can. But the U.S. was still granting visas like to the six families in California that went this summer way after March. They got granted to go from California to I mean, Afghanistan. Why yeah. why were they still allowing that? Look, the it's whole stupid. thing, the whole thing, there's definitely mistakes made by the people that stayed and stuff like that, but also mistakes, there's mistakes made, made by, all around. All around. And, all and the, around. the bottom line is there's still people over there that are U.S. citizens that are right. stuck. I agree. I, it sucks, but yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, but he get, but Biden <laughs> did give a, a give a mission accomplished victory too. speech yeah. on Tuesday, yeah. though, already, even though people are still success. stuck over there. So yeah, he called it an extraordinary could, success. could not have gone better in his estimation. It was basically the gist of the speech. So um, uh, besides the what hundred people that died, including thirteen U.S. Service yeah, members. but that's the world that he's living. Is that yeah. it couldn't have possibly gone better? Um, number one, the cream of the crop today. Sadly, keeping it kind of sad. Unfortunately, due Jesus. to the heavy yeah, sorry guys, due to the heavy flooding last week and continued rains this week from Hurricane Ida, uh, Bonnaroo. The music festival in Manchester, Tennessee, scheduled. It had been delayed uh, for this upcoming weekend, had to be canceled altogether. Pat, Hard Factor Pat is a Bonnaroo veteran. Uh, can you please explain to the listeners, Pat, what people are missing out on this year due to the rain, last year due to COVID, two years in a row? Oh, let's talk about the room, man. You want to go down to the farm? Meet me at the farm. Which stage? What stage? I don't know. You know what I mean? Which talk about Bonnaroo, Manchester, Tennessee, bro. It's the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the mother of all music festivals, right? It was the first one. It was the pioneer of the new music festival era. Uh, started 20 years ago, right outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Perfect mm. music festival, really, because of its proximity to Nashville. So uh, Bonnaroo is really fucking hot. Uh, there's rumors that it's built on a uh, on a like a like a dump, right? Built over a dump kind of situation. Oh, Mount Trashmore. It's just it's just a hot fucking open field uh, <laughs> where there's lots of molly and camping. Mm, nice. It's one of those camping festivals where like you wake up in your tent at uh, six a.m. or seven a.m. as soon as the sun gets up and your tent gets to be 109 degrees and mm. there's no water anywhere and your mouth tastes like a little person oh. shat in it. Don't you uh, wake up to the that scent That sounds of, like a good party. Yeah. Though. Don't you wake up to the scent of yourself and all the others that smell just t terrible because no one's yeah. clean there? I no wouldn't know. I, I only go VIP. So. Oh. Yeah, but still, even VIP. No. Even VIP, if you're glamping at one of these things, you're going to get pretty funky. No. Uh, you're going to get pretty stinky. The first it's time I went, I was, I was working and um, had to camp, had to slum it. The time that I got to go back where I... First time I went, I was an intern. Second time I got to go back with a band where, like, oh. normally is the sweetest way to experience a festival. Big swing and dick there. Still the worst festival experience I've ever oh. had in my life. Even with all access passes, oh, no. it was still hot and nasty and there was nowhere to sit. Okay. Uh, well. But Ed Helms, right? He he uh, he does a bluegrass jam there for the bluegrass situation, which is pretty cool. And, um, you know, uh, Robert Randolph cool. one time um, stole my girlfriend there uh, okay uh like, you know wow uh, i thought you were gonna have some nice things to say but let's move it on <laughs> and surprise surprise mates because that was top three they were shit eh? uh we're taking a real quick international trip down under to australia it's magpie swooping season again fellas look at this horrifying uh video <laughs> posted to instagram from the brown cardigan account in australia here it is you see the magpie? Oh, That's oh, just a full shit. grown man, eh? <laughs> Cry like a little bitch because the magpie is chasing him and swooping down for his head. Uh, unbelievable. Keep your head on a swivel down under during swooping season, July through November every year. And that is today's cup of coffee in the big time. 
Those are fun. Rick Holt sends us a bunch of those, and they're just yeah. every one of them is funny. Magpie videos yeah. are great. Yeah, they are the best. Uh, if you haven't watched a magpie swooping video, you should, because uh, that was a more fun story than any of the trends today. And that was today's cup of coffee in the big time. Brought to you by Gabby. Inflation is out of control. It's crazy how fast these prices uh, of just about everything are rising. Gas, groceries, clothes, you name it. And all of the experts are saying it's going to get worse before it gets better. I've been looking at all the ways I can personally cut costs, uh, ways, uh, ways to save where I can. I started with my auto insurance, and I started with Gabby. That's the way to do it, G-A-B-I. Shopping for auto insurance sucks. I get it. And so does Gabby. That's why they do all the work for you, things that would take uh, days or weeks, Gabby does in minutes. Gabby uses uh, your current policy to compare your uh, current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers. Uh, they're one of the true comparison platforms with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. And because Gabby uses your current coverage, uh, they only showcase policies that are the same or better than your current coverage. Many of them at a lower price. And Gabby is free to use, and they never sell your information, so no annoying spam or robocalls. Gabby helped uh, me find the right policy that was $50 cheaper a month than my current policy. Uh, that's $600 a year when you add it all up. People who Boom. switch. Yeah, yeah, that's a big savings. People who switch with Gabby, on average, save 80 bucks a month versus their current policy. That's 80 bucks a month. That's even more than I saved. Uh, so right now... It's not just me who loves Gabby. Gabby has been featured in TechCrunch, Forbes, and USA Today. Uh, start saving on your auto insurance today. Go to Gabby, G-A-B-I dot com slash hard factor to start saving today. It's totally free. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash hard factor. Gabby dot com slash hard factor. Well, there you have it. So, gentlemen, let's talk about the law real quick, or a legal story. So 17 defendants in cases related to uh, the January 6th riot at the Capitol are just dumbfounded because their attorney, John Pierce, who, uh, by the way, is representing by far the most defendants involved in the January 6th proceedings. <laughs> it's his uh, show. <laughs> yeah, it's his show, bro. He's making a, a real career That's out awesome. of it. That's got to be pro bono, right? A lot no, of these guys. not at all, dude. Oh, not at they, all. Have, uh, they have money? Okay. And we're going to get to uh, that. It might be pro bono. The defendants might not be paying for it, but that's not stopping oh, John. There's a super PAC somewhere. From making a little mm -hmm. money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, John's gone missing, guys. John Pierce. Um, he has not shown up at any scheduled Wait, court. Sorry to interrupt you, but was he, is he buried under a pile of cash? Did they look, <laughs> did they look under the pile of cash? Hey. Hey, oh. <laughs> Lawyers, right? Uh, so, yeah, no, John's gone missing. He has not uh, made it to any scheduled court appearance for the last week, uh, citing hmm. that he's potentially in the hospital fighting COVID-19. Um, and, guys, amongst mm. his clients are uh his 17 of them are both members of the proud boys and the oath keepers um, the latter of which is perhaps the more upset because if they say they're going to be somewhere at a time they keep their word uh, as is evidenced by their name um, but john is nowhere to be found in his place pierce has been sending associate ryan marshall who although doing his best prosecutors have warned a judge that he is uh marshall is quote not a licensed attorney mm. yeah mm. He, Wait, what? He's so he's representing seventeen people in a very high profile case, and he is not an attorney. Not a licensed attorney. On top of that, Willie, he is uh, personally facing two pending felony criminal cases against him in Pennsylvania, including defrauding a widow and her late yeah. husband in an "I care a lot" like situation. This guy's yeah. like Roy Johnson, the coach yeah. from uh, from uh, Bishop Sycamore. He's yeah, very who's similar. Got, who's got a warrant out for his arrest? Yeah, both of them. <laughs> yeah. Right, brothers in arms. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The rioters like, man, this has just gone from bad to worse. Am I right? He's not even an attorney, uh, guys. According to uh, <laughs> according to uh, law clerk, that's what he is, Ryan Marshall. Um, Pierce is quote sadly ill with COVID nineteen on a ventilator and unresponsive. Damn. Yeah, which probably sure he is. Yeah. Well, Sorry, uh, no, please. I mean, if I if I had a lot of people who were after me for finding out I was a fake lawyer, I would definitely fake my death. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And that ventilator is on a yacht <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Pierce probably uh, maybe he regrets um, this tweet from the 17th of August. Uh, all I know is the entire 82nd Airborne couldn't make me get an experimental government vaccine stuck in my arm. Hashtag first cavalry. Um, 
So yeah, yeah could... maybe he regrets it. Maybe not at all, because maybe he's on a yacht. As Mark said, uh, guys, prosecutors smell something fishy, and they think that uh, putting forth an unlicensed attorney might just be a stall tactic that uh, Pierce is conning them, which they have good reason to believe, guys, not because Pierce. Pierce, he's a con man. Uh, straight up a con man. Uh, in, in August 2020, Pierce, who was a civil attorney, not a criminal attorney, uh, he launched a charitable nonprofit um, called Hashtag Fight Back Foundation, whose mission um, involved raising money to fund lawsuits that would, quote, take our country back. Um, he then went to the Rittenhouse family, Kyle Rittenhouse, and uh, had them sign a retainer agreement to retain him for $100,000 and an hourly billing rate of $1,275, which is like two and a half times the normal rate. And that amount, of course, would be paid to him by the, you guessed it, hashtag fight back organization. Then he went on a media blitz on the Newsmaxes and the Fox Newses of the world, soliciting donations to help uh, Kyle, uh, but really um, stacking up the cash that he was going to be billing the written houses. This is why we needed to make the super PAC like this. This guy is living the dream that we wanted to live, which was defrauding everybody with a fake cause and then paying ourselves for it from he billed the Rittenhouse family uh, full rate. Twelve hundred seventy five dollars for going shopping for a shirt that he was going to wear on his Tucker Carlson appearance. That's a tough bill to get. That's a tough bill. Um, Yeah, guys, uh, fight back eventually shifted its purpose from Rittenhouse to stopping election fraud after the Rittenhouses started saying, hey, what? where's the money? Uh, and then also there was lots of questions raised about whether or not they were leaving Rittenhouse in jail uh, so they could raise more money, saying, man, that bail's $2 million. That's a lot of money. Uh, after they'd raised $5 million, but mm. I don't know, billable hours, you know? $2 million more. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, then he pretty much quit or got himself fired. And now Dang. he's faking, faking his death with COVID. Yeah. Either way, pretty tricky. Pretty tricky. Uh, sending the, the fake attorney uh, is, is essentially stopping the proceedings. So it might be the smartest fucking thing he's ever done. There's a 100% chance Pierce knows how to play, how to rig three card Monty. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Where's the queen? Absolutely. absolutely. Follow my follow my hands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see where he, he, he comes from. A bunch of sources. Yeah, it's going to go in. fast. Going to go fast. Got to go fast now. <laughs> but <Fraudsters. sources laughs> come like, forward and said he's, he doesn't have COVID. Are they, oh, wait. Who said people he have, doesn't have? People have come forth. Not, uh, not and the oh, they're claiming that he's just high. Yeah. Oh, he's healthy as yeah. an ox. Oh, for sure. But we. But th- this has been amazing to watch, like, because there have been some epic fraudsters that have just blossomed during the COVID era. Like, COVID yeah. era has been the best time ever to defraud people. And, like, guys are getting on ESPN. They're getting on high-profile law cases. Like, it's incredible. It's just incredible. What's, people people made like hundreds of thousands of dollars just collecting it from the government, and they didn't even fuck it. The government didn't check. Like it's just, it's in, it's been an incredible couple of years. Fraudsters could not believe their luck when COVID hit. Oh, <laughs> and when when America got yeah, super divided too, that was huge. Fraudsters were like, oh, "I'm gonna use this." Oh yeah, for sure. That's that's leverage. They're like they got an angle for everything. Now this guy's like starting to squeal. You He's know, starting to squeal on, on his yacht. Uh, mm-hmm. Guys, speaking yeah. of <laughs> speaking of violence around <laughs> stolen elections. Capitol Hill's youngest congressman and most prolific sender of unsolicited dick pics, allegedly, Madison Cawthorn of North Carolina, was speaking to the Macon County Republican Party um, at their headquarters in Franklin, North Carolina, um, who, by the way, guys, is running a fundraiser raffle of a Mossberg model 512 Mm. gauge tactical stock shotgun, Mossy Oak, 20 inch barrel with a shell holder. And that is signed by Mr. Madison Cawthorn himself. Tickets are just ten dollars and the drawing will be held on October 28th. Um, Anyway, Madison, every single event that's a Republican event has a gun drawing. Exactly. Like yeah. almost almost every single one. And it's, it's either signed that by or like ultra expensive whiskey. That's on the front page of their of their um, website. Uh, <laughs> or an electric guitar. Maybe like it's always something hilarious like that. Like I mean, there's worse things to give away to get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, I agree. Guns, guns, whiskey and electric guitars. I mean, I it's not like you're going to be upset. Uh Anyway, Madison was speaking on Sunday where he made some comments that uh, some on the left are saying was a call for violence. Uh, I'm going to play the clip, guys, and I'll let you be the judge. So here is Madison um, speaking to the Franklin County uh, Republicans. Everything that we're sitting here talking about, we're all so passionate right now. 
the things that we are wanting to fight for, it doesn't matter if our votes don't count. That's exactly right. Because, you know, if our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, then it's, it's going to lead to one place, and it's bloodshed. Right. And I will tell you, as much as I am willing to defend our liberty at all costs, there's nothing that I would dread doing more than having to pick up arms against a fellow American. Yeah. And the way that we can have recourse against that is if we all passionately demand that we have election security in all 50 states. Yeah. Yeah. And nice. A34 wins the gun. Right. As I said, I would dread having to pick up arms yeah. against a fellow American, but if I absolutely had to, yeah. it would be with, Mo with a Mossberg Model 512 gauge tactical <laughs> stock shotgun. Prior yeah. to the drawing, the shotgun will be on display at Jeff's Ammo and Arms in Franklin. You know, yeah. this is this. You know, people people who like uh, basically threaten civil civil war all the time. They just suck. Like it, it. Like there's all there's all these people, and it's like the same people do it on both sides. It's all like the secession people. It's like the like. Oh, I would hate to have to turn against you. Yeah, it's like they, it's, <laughs> a, like, it's like it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, there's like, currently not bloodshed, but there has to be in the future. Don't like, make me I use would, that Mossberg yeah. that I plan on winning mm -hmm. on October 28th when they do the drawing. <laughs> Yeah, um, tight. how it many? Sucks. I mean, civil war. Civil war is insane. We just talked about yesterday, General Sherman, who literally like burned the South to the ground. Like nobody wants that again. Like stop. If I can't stop. have. If you, no one can. If you invoke like civil wars over like over over little shit. Like I mean, I, I, what is he talking about there? He's the talking, about talking about the, the election, election was security. stolen. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't get, if we don't get Good these Lord. goddamn mail in votes under control, I'm gonna have to shoot somebody. Is what he's he saying. Have, he needs a lot <laughs> we better. We redraw proof. these lines. Yeah. yeah, he needs a lot better proof of massive fraud than if he wants to threaten, threaten civil violence. war over yeah. that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the people were kind of like. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, they, they were like, they were like, mm-hmm. Yeah. You heard it goes in different mm -hmm. directions. How, how, how long do you think it takes for Cawthorn to correct someone who confuses him for a combat veteran? Because you know what happens all the time. Oh, you know, yeah, for sure. You know, you know the gap of time from where they confuse him to where he corrects him is a little too long, right? Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah but sure. that's He's not kinda, the issue. Yeah. It's going to be when he has to answer to all the dick pics one day. Yes. Yeah. He's kind of like hit, hit him in the wheelchair, him in the wheelchair, and then like probably like wearing camo from time to time is like the equivalent of Biden constantly bringing up Bo every, every single time. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, the gold star. Did and, you see? And, yeah, did you see? Talking about Bo more than people that actually yeah. died in the war. My son, yes, who just much died. more. Gotta much relax. More. He's talking about Bo more than my son who just died in yeah, Afghanistan. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, Cawthorn spokes person Luke Ball um, addressed the criticism on Tuesday uh, saying and this is the actual quote um, in his con in his comments Congressman Cawthorn is clearly advocating for violence not to occur over election integrity questions this guy is a fucking comms director and that's how he worded that's how he worded his fucking his, his this his, is to prevent violence his so on like a separate yeah. page yeah, for violence much. To be clearly clear, advocating to for violence. Yeah. To be clear, the violence doesn't have to happen. Right. Yeah. As long as y'all fix this. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's, he's like the same as like the climate people that are like, the world's going to end 100%. Unless, you, you know, like you're, it's the same type right. of same type of like dire language, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's always a string. Uh, there's always a carrot yeah. on the string in politics. Yeah. And that segment was brought to you guys by Mossberg Firearms. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Nothing yeah, I like no. better at my raffles. It is. It is. Seriously, if you want to see if you're in the area, it is at Jeff's Ammo and an Arms in Franklin until the 28th on display. So it's on display. I Man, I wouldn't display Madison Cawthorn. So oh, sure. shit. Who the fuck wants a sign? <laughs> 18 or older. Give me a have break. to pay the taxes. $10 to entry. You'd have to have a better Three signature for on there than Cawthorn, right? <laughs> to put something up in the shop, like very presumptuous by Cawthorn. They might, yeah. they might have, they, they, like uh, he's Sign publicized it, that it's there. Sign it. They may have put the gun like down. It's maybe not at the the top of the display. Yeah. No, bro. It literally says that it's displayed. It, it lists it where it's. Yeah, displayed. but they're gonna they're gonna bury that one at the bottom of the mm, rack. We'll That's see. not that impressive as a signature. No, it's not. Um. All right, guys. It's time for the TikTok international moment. Boom. Today we are going to Ireland. We're going to go to Russia and then we're going to go up to Vancouver for the closer. And um, let's get to it. Uh, we're going to go to Ireland first. And Mark, you may want to just go get a nice cold beverage and uh, come back in about two minutes because you are not going to like this story because it's about fist sized, aggressive, sexually charged house spiders. Um, that's house 
spider wow. uh, because they're in your house um, and they're running amok in Ireland. Um, so, yeah. Cross Fist that off size. the list. Of well, so I got to make a correction. Size. I got to make a correction. It is from the oh. Irish Times, but this is taking place in England. Oh, really? Also in the UK, though. Okay. Well, wherever in the UK. Okay. In the UK. We're going to go with Ireland. There it is. Is the house. Oh. Ireland under attack. From sex crazed spiders the size of your hand. That's the headline. So I don't know what, where you saw it, Pat. But anyway, um, so apparently the species of spider, the giant house spider, which can get to about 10 centimeters in diameter and can scurry up your leg at the equivalent of zero to 60 miles an hour in one second. So that's a fast spider. It's like uh, a once again, roller coaster. Yeah, it's very, very fast. It'll break your break your bones um, are once again plaguing the UK and Ireland um, as they do every August through September because what? they are very horny, horny and aren't uh, letting humans stand in their way of finding that special female spider to impregnate so she can lay hundreds of eggs and continue the cycle of life and the cycle of Mark's nightmares. Wow. Yeah. That's every- one of the scarier things about spiders, too, is like. If they lay eggs, it's game over. Oh. There's just so many spiders. So many. Have so. you ever stepped on a pregnant spider's back mark and the egg and the and the little babies flat go everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, what? that's so terrible. My wife found yeah. a black widow in the back. We had a tree removed a couple of years ago because it was about to fall on the house. So a professional tree remover came out, but there's still mm-hmm. a stump. And like we were out of the pool, baby pool two weeks ago, and my wife found a black widow in the tree stump. Oof. Gross. What'd yeah, wolf, wolf spiders carry them oh, around. She sprayed it with a hose, and I just wanted to move immediately. I wanted to move. You need to get some spider spray. I mean, it's very toxic, yeah. but it Mark works. goes to the shed and gets a, gets a can of gasoline. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they will infest the shed. Um, Dr. Chris Terrell uh, Neald of Nottingham Trent University said, quote, the spider that is coming into houses at the moment is the house spider and it is one of the world's biggest spiders um and is urging everyone to look under all your pillows in your shoes the back of your neck uh because there could be a very large and horny uh spider hiding in those places and um while the things are yeah totally terrifying just back of your neck just totally terrifying Mark, you want to check the back of your neck. Um, and they can, uh, they're they not venomous, but they can deliver quite a painful bite if provoked or stepped on or rolled over on while you're sleeping in bed. Oh, you're um, saying the fist-sized <laughs> spider can actually bite you and hurt you? Yeah, I, I yeah, believe it. Yeah. I'd buy it. Yeah, especially at night when you're rolling around in bed. You lay, you just roll over okay. on one of those things, okay. Mark. <laughs> um, but Mark, that doctor TikTok also... TikTok, they're short. They're supposed to be short ones. <laughs> yeah, I know. But that doctor also wants you to remember the vital role these spiders play in the ecosystem as far as pest control. And said the silver lining for people like you, Mark, is that once these large males mate and create thousands of other spiders, they themselves will die. So one less large spider, but thousands of more baby spiders to grow up to be large spiders. So That's great s- news. Sleep tight, Mark. Um, now moving to Russia... And before I begin the story, I want everyone to know that this little girl is fine in this story. But my God, is this hilarious. So we've all been to petting zoos, right? Um, it's like a rite of passage as a child. You go to a petting zoo. Maybe you hold a lizard or a bird um, or you are brave enough to even hold a snake like um, one little girl named Victoria did while visiting Russia's <laughs> Butterfly Park petting zoo with her parents uh there she is with the the rufus beaked snake which is a venomous snake by the way so uh what could go wrong right well um this is what went wrong here she is here's the snake oh it bit her oh bit her right right in the fat cheek uh yeah okay at least she's fully grown so uh, the venom won't fully affect her body yeah her her 47 pound body yeah, so that's a venomous snake that the zoo staff just dangled around their neck, bit her right on the fat part of her cheek, and she was rushed to the hospital as a precaution because though this thing is from East Africa, it's considered mildly venomous. It still has enough venom to kill small animals it hunts, so God knows what would have happened if that little girl was allergic or something. Um, and then according to Victoria's dad, Vladimir, quote, the zoo staff said that the snake does not attack people, and but look at what it did to my Victoria. It bit her on the little cheek, and I am not pleased with zoo for lie they told me about nice snake so um you know vladimir's very upset um yeah, obviously that they live yeah yeah Should but again rightfully she's so. fine yeah she's fine um and uh you know she's not going to be going back to that petting zoo um all right this last one guys is from vancouver uh at a dairy queen in port alberni uh british columbia um goes to show you that this is it's not just americans who are losing their minds with masks here's a local news clip which pretty much explains it all and 
that you may find this next video disturbing. A man in Port Alberni has taken his frustration with BC's COVID rules to the absolute extreme, and it was caught on camera. Uh, he's just peeing on a counter. That's yeah, the sound of workers at a Dairy himself. Queen shrieking in horror as a disgruntled customer appears to urinate on the counter. Oh, right on the in videos register. posted to Facebook, the man can be heard arguing with staff, refusing to wear a mask. You don't have a brain. So I think this guy's pretty much homeless. Uh, I mean, he's peeing on countertops. So yeah. hear his voice. Yeah. He sounds like Shorzy from Letterkenny. <laughs> I mean, we all have this card to play. <laughs> There he goes. Oh, he just whips it out. This is the first incident of this nature, um, <laughs> but I haven't uh, heard of anything else, especially not uh, not like this. Um, I think Sorry, people should just uh, wear their masks and be safe and be polite. <laughs> so that yeah, cop is wow. Sergeant polite Chris. About it. Yeah. Uh, th that guy lives like how Will wants to live if there were no rules. Yeah. Remember Will's, mm. Will's, Will's like, oh, I'd like on the to counter masturbate if you're not public. Happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'd Will like... Style guy's living the life i mean too bad he's gonna get locked up for it but he is yeah. completely free yeah they haven't caught him yet here's a picture of that what he actually looks like um so i yeah. bet he's got low blood pressure man <laughs> oh chilling. yeah he just does what he wants the best part is after he <laughs> left after the people were screaming he's doing it and he and he left he yelled at them he goes you're fucking psychos he told them they're fucking psychos. <laughs> <laughs> now clean up my piss psychos yeah, that dude is relaxed yeah he's not worried about it Give me a blizzard. Yeah, and give him a golden shower. So, um, all right, guys, uh, I'll tell you what. 40 is just around the corner for me. And mm. with that number closing in, you can bet your ass I lose some sleep with worrying about things. Should I, should I get a colonoscopy? Do I really want to know if that doesn't go well? How much longer am I going to have my teeth? Am I crazy or is everyone else crazy? You know, the normal stuff. Mm. Luckily, though, once I fall asleep, my Helix Matrix helps my troubled mind stay asleep and wake up refreshed, ready to take on the exact same worries as the day before, <laughs> right? So Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preference to perfect mattress for you. Uh, why would you buy a mattress made for someone else, right? With Helix, you're getting the mattress that you know is perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, so they have a several different mattresses from firm, soft, medium, uh, cooling, hot, uh, plus size sleepers like us. I took the quiz. I got the Midnight Lux mattress because I, I, I sleep on my side. I kind of hug a pillow uh, as like a safety thing. On my stomach side, it's perfect for me. Amazing mattress. Um, it's like, you know, those uh, hotel mattresses when you go to a nice hotel and you sleep on a nice mattress and you're like, God, how, where do they get this mattress? It feels like that every night. So if you're looking for a mattress, take the quiz and it'll show up right to your door shipped for free helix was awarded number one best overall mattress picked by 2020 and by gq and wired magazine so go to helix sleep dot com slash hard factor take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life they have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk free they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it but you're going to love it helix is offering up to 200 bucks off all mattresses and, and two free pillows for hard factor listeners go to helix sleep dot com slash hard factor that's helix sleep dot com slash hard factor for 200 bucks off and two free pillows all right we got one more story but one more piece of business first uh when you're in a low point you you might feel alone but over 50 percent of americans struggle with their mental health whenever i'm feeling down i reach out for support and i'm glad i do because it always helps me and asking for support when you need it is actually a sign of strength with talkspace it is easy to get that support talkspace matches you with a licensed therapist and you schedule the live video sessions all from the comfort of your device you can start messaging your therapist the same day you sign up whether you're a, pa a parent student millennial or just someone having a hard day talkspace can provide the support to help you feel better with a single message um they, the talk talkspace therapists help you develop tools to cope in difficult times they're really good they talkspace works around your schedule like i said it's at your convenience you can send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the app uh, you schedule the sessions on your time with the, with a licensed therapist which is important from anywhere uh, and whether you're, you're experiencing depression anxiety or other problems uh, even like relationship problems they do relationship uh 
couples therapy. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform to help you sort through any issue. Uh, Talkspace therapists are experts in dozens of specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more to help you start feeling better. And start feeling better with a single message. Match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com. That's Talkspace.com, and you can get $100 off your first month with the promo code HARDFACTOR. $100 off when you use code HARDFACTOR at Talkspace.com. Okay, guys. Lots of school boards are meeting and have been meeting to make important decisions for this upcoming school year, which for a lot have already started, and for some are starting in the coming weeks. Vir- Virginia, a state where all four of us went to grade school, is one of those states that starts after Labor Day, at least in, in our county where we grew up, and also in Henrico County, uh, and that's why Henrico County held their last big meeting before the school year on August 26th. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it makes sense, right? They're mm-hmm. about to start you got to get year. Got to tidy up all the loose ends. Ready to but go. You don't want to. You don't want to not have them tidied up before you start. Right. And it's a tough gig for school administrators too. The past few years, right? Like I mean, like you really can't win. Lots of people are going to be mad at you. Whatever you decide, and the kids forget about it. Like they're screwed. Right. It's terrible right. all around. I don't envy them. I'm glad I'm not in grade school anymore, and I'm glad I don't have kids in grade school. Lucky me, huh? <laughs> yeah. Really hitting this pandemic at the right time. Yeah. Woo. Minus the diabetes. <laughs> yeah, diabetes is. is around the corner. But the that's diabetes all, was that's an unfortunate side about. effect of the pandemic. Yeah. But yeah, everything Other than else, that, though, was perfect. My wife and I getting along great at home, but it's, it's been a dream. So, and that's not a joke. So, yeah, the Henrico School Board uh, was more than three hours into its agenda in this August 26th meeting that included issues like COVID-19, a return to in-school learning, transportation issues, the school resource officer program, and the adoption of pre-Labor Day start times in the future years. So there you go. Maybe Virginia will get on that August train soon. And uh, once that ended, once they got through all those, the last item on the agenda was the public comment portion of the meeting. And now you had you had to sign up for the public comment section of that list. Uh, you know, so and that, that list of names was tabulated by I assume at least one person via combing email responses or whatever method they do over there in Henrico County in the greater Richmond area. And then that list of names was put together on a sheet of paper, probably printed and retrieved from a printer. I don't know what they do over there in Henrico County, but any Entry method they choose, stuff, right? Yeah. I assume requires someone to grab the paper from the printer and then the list once finally formed and fully formed uh, was presented to Henrico County uh, School Board um, uh, Chair uh, Roscoe Cooper. And I'm, I'm assuming someone handed it to him. And I think all of the members of the school board got this piece of paper. Mm. So at this point, at least, you know, you got to think two to two to ten people have seen this list uh, and, and, and handled it. And look, uh, then Roscoe calls the people up one by one to give their comments. That's the kind of standard operation procedures there at Henrico. Uh, nice. Henrico County. It's Sounds a big like a tight ship. Yeah, normal stuff, right? And Henrico County is a big county, so it's probably it's probably not a surprise to Mr. Cooper when he sees the list that there's several names on it. Uh, and you know, how is he supposed to recognize the name of every parent in the county? He's only been on the board for six to seven years. He's a busy man, along with being the chair of the school board. He's also the pastor of Rising Mount Z- Zion Baptist Church. The guy's a busy man. Certainly too busy to comb the emails and print the list of names himself. Which brings me back to my point that many people have seen the list. He's very active in his community, and now he's three hours into this meeting. And uh, in this clip I'm about to play you, he's just doing his job, calling the public members up to the microphone. Nice. In, in, in this uh, environment, you answer to us, and I'm asking that you do not pass this policy in Virginia. Thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. We do appreciate you. <laughs> he appreciates that. Yeah, right. Phil that was the most yet. Oh. We'd love to tell you that, that you answer to them. Mm-hmm. Phil McCracken. Is Phil McCracken there? <laughs> Sulk, Suk, Mahidik. So that's Su- Suk Mahidik. <laughs> Suk Mahidik. <laughs> he said it again. Ophelia McHawk. <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia McHawk. No way. Eileen <laughs> Dover. <laughs> oh come on, man! Eileen Dover. Stop Eileen Dover. Don Kiddick. <laughs> that one took me a minute to get. Don Kiddick. Donkey Dick. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Spell it. Oh shit. 
Wayne Kerr. Wayne Kerr. <laughs> Dunky Dick spelled like identical. Dun- I mean, Do- Don Key Dick. Don's yeah. good, but it's spelled Dunky Dick. Yeah. Um, yeah so. <laughs> Why did awesome. he keep reading it? Because they did a really, really, really good job of covering. It wasn't like the classics. Right. No, that like it wasn't he, IP freely. Eileen over was. Can someone like, remove that from the thing? I, I think my thing froze. Can someone remove the? Is yeah. it off the screen? It's off. Yeah, it's off. Okay, my thing. Um. So yeah, it. The, I mean, they did an okay job, Pat. Like the names, like Don Kedick is spelled pretty much. That guy back. has to be able was to it see like it on the paper. Or something? And be like, no, on, it was D O N space like he E D I C K. <laughs> that guy gets it. his awareness level. If they like rated, if they had Madden ratings for like school superintendents, his awareness is is at a twenty. I I don't it's, think so. It, I think when it, you're not expecting it, these things can happen to you. Like everyone's like, oh, I w- I would have figured not it out after I leaned over. So here's here's the deal. <laughs> like I already mentioned, he's the pastor. He's a, Roscoe's also a graduate of Henrico High School. And um, his most obvious credential is that he's the easiest person to trick in the world. Yes, he, uh, he can be had with little to no effort. He's the first boss in the game of trickery. If you can't trick him, you can't trick anyone. Uh, you have to imagine Roscoe, the first and second, um, probably the first. Roscoe's in his middle age. Probably the first has, has, has moved on. But if his dad's still around, the second, they've got to be uh, pretty upset with Roscoe the third here. Um, yeah, they're going to be giving it to him as long along with his two children that are currently in the Henrico uh, High School system, uh, next family gathering. I, that I imagine, family yeah. the family needs to live in fear that Roy Johnson or Pierce ever finds this guy. Because if, if he gets found by by Coach Roy Johnson or uh, Pierce, the fraudster <laughs> from today, this guy's done. His, his life his house, is his gone. everything is liquid. College funds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> if you have a name, if you live in a Henrico County and you have a name like Sid on it, and you have something important to say, you're probably screwed because now they're going to be really paying attention to the names. So like they got me once before. Yeah. They got. Hold on. Let's can we review these names? For example, Sharon Cox not going to be able to. Uh, Sharon not, Cox not going to be able to get her get her favorite. points across. And Eric Sean is not going to be able to get up there. There's no way. Uh, and for, Sharon Cox. Yeah, you can forget about it, Oliver. My face. <laughs> Best You're not going to get. The prankster waited three hours. He or she had to wait a full three. I know. That's awesome. Well, they weren't there. So like they like the the funny the best part is like there was only they probably could have looked out in the audience and seen there was only one person there. Right. It was that so one like, lady who complained and then correct. nobody else. And then it was a list of me. people <laughs> and he read all of them and no one came to the podium because it was just like high school kids that were at home. They sent the email. Yeah, he names. was getting trolled by his students. Yeah. Like by like his, yeah. he like teach if he's like a if he's like a counselor or he's like a superintendent, he teaches like one class. And it was like his students probably that were getting him. Don Key Dick is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Don? <laughs> oh fuck. Well, anyways. Um oh yeah, also I came up with Frida Titties. Frida Titties. Yeah, Frida, Frida Titties. Frida like. uh, Titties is a hard sell for a last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I, with D. I, yeah. not with this guy. He went with Key Dick. Yeah, he was, Don he was probably it was probably Don <laughs> K I. No, I have the spelling. Oh, you have the spelling. K E D I C K. It was just missing the Y. It was Don K E D I C K. Don Kedick. Kedick. They released they, they they released them. Phil McCracken's pretty pretty bad. Uh, suck my suck my dick was S U K and then M A H D I K. That's when hard. he said that one twice. I yeah. couldn't I lo- I couldn't believe it. Ophelia, pot there, yeah. I leaned over. I mean, it just sounds, you, you can hear it when you say it. Eileen yeah. Dover. Yeah. Suk Amahidik. And he yeah. said it twice. I know. I mean, this guy is just. He, he's, he's probably just excited that they aren't there so he can go home. Yeah. He, but he had to read them twice. It's, it's in the rules. Got to read them twice. Yeah. He, no, but, this guy didn't realize what was going on for sure because he would have just been like, these are fake names. Yeah. You stop I mean, reading them immediately. He, he could have that on that day. He could have gotten with. Got, been gotten with hairy vagina like it was anything was going through <laughs> <laughs> no hairy vagina COVID, today. covid yeah. taking a toll it took a toll on him he's just like he's, he's asleep at the wheel henrico school board i uh they're probably gonna have a tough time convincing the parents that whatever decision they make was the right one after he's that. a man of god uh, leave, leave. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Oh well, come on! I mean, he's he yeah. got duped. He got, he got this duped. is this is like uh, this is like ESPN. I mean, he him ESPN. He certainly proved he's very mortal, Pat. If by man yeah, of God, that's if true. that's what you're talking about, he is very. Also, full of all flaws. the QAnon yeah. people, they're all getting duped. QAnon got duped. ESPN got duped. Uh, this guy got duped. It's a lot of duping. Lots of duping this week. Try to dupe us. We'll see. You got the five star review names. You got chances. You got the voicemails. Try to try to dupe us. Let's see if you can slip one over. We did Ooh. miss that. I missed that one. It was like Mike Hawk. Uh, yeah, Mike uh, Hawk. Yeah, I missed Mike Hawk. Mike Hawk. Uh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to do it. it. To be fair, yeah. Mark. We I know. Well, it. we were like the Henrico County School Board. Uh, mm. and, and that evidence. It's easy is out to there. trick us. Yes. Yeah. All right, whatever, fine, fuck it. That's going to do it for Hard Factor. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got a real funny name, uh, please send a picture of your license, and then we'll read it on the show. Um, but, yeah, we love you guys. Oh, leave the five-star reviews, please. We're getting close to Friday. Five-star reviews, leave them on Apple. It's Voice super mails. important for the algorithm, and we, we like reading them. It's win-win. Uh, leave the voicemails, 512-270-1480, and then what's the email where they can leave a voice memo? Hard Factor voicemail at gmail.com. You're going to send a crystal clear memo there. Uh, uh, it's Wes's preferred method. Just so it is. I mean, You're going to have to walk me through The year's that. preferred method, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, and then 5 p.m. today, green room, a lot of poop stories. It's going to get gross. Pat, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, you raised your hand, but the poop story probably took everything, Turned all your thoughts off. away. Shh, gone. Um, all right. Shut him down. Whatever. <laughs> 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 Thanks again for tuning in. We love you guys. And most importantly, have a great fucking day. Thing that we're sitting here talking about, we're all. <laughs> I don't know how my screen froze for like two.